country. And they are raping and killing women. And it's a terrible thing. As far as the abortion is concerned, it is now back. Uh, in many cases, the... Hey, guess who else is raping women? Donald J. Trump. President Biden, inflation has slowed, but prices remain high. Since you took office, the price of essentials has increased. For example, a basket of groceries that cost $100 then now costs more than $120. And typical home prices have jumped more than 30%. What do you say to voters who feel they are worse off under your presidency than they were under President Trump? We've got to take a look at what I was left when I became president and what Mr. Trump left me. We had an economy that was in free fall. The pandemic was so badly handled. Many people were dying. All he said was, it's not that serious. Just inject a little bleach in your arm. You'll be all right. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. And so what we had to do is try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. We created 15,000 new jobs. And we brought out in a position where we have 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. But there's more to be done. There's more to be done. Working class people are still in trouble. I come from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I come of household where the kitchen table, if the things weren't able to be met during the month, it was a, pr a problem. Price of eggs, the price of gas, the price of housing, the price of... Oh, let's see what he say. A whole range of things. That's why I'm working so hard to make sure I deal with those problems, that we're going to make sure that we... Yeah, he could barely talk. Housing. We're going to make sure we build two, two million new units. We're going to make sure we cap rents so corporate greed can't take over. The combination... What I was left with in corporate greed is the reason why we're in this problem right now. In addition to that, we're in a situation where if you had to take a look at all that was done in his administration, he didn't do much at all. By the time he left, there were things that were in chaos, literally chaos. And so we put things back together. We created, I said, those jobs. We make sure we had a situation where we now we brought down the price of prescription drugs, which is a major issue for many people, to $15 for, for uh a insulin shot as opposed to $400. No senior has to pay more than $200 for any drug, all the drugs they can include beginning next year. And the situation is making, and we're going to make that available to everybody. So <laughs> Come on, Joe. The price of, around the kitchen table, and that's what we're going to get done. Thank you. President Trump? We have the greatest economy in the history of our country. Uh, we have never done so well. We Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID. And when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in a Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929. By the time we finished, so we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military, and no wars, and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for, and we should have, is getting us out of that COVID mess. Uh, he created mandates that was a disaster for our country. But other than that, we had we had given them back a a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID, and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce-back jobs that bounce back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job, and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Thank you, President Biden. That's a bunch of bull BS. Number one, let me tell y'all something, man. Joe Biden had this infrastructure bill that he it, he has people building railroads, light rails, doing this, doing that. So that created jobs right there. That created jobs. It's other it's other jobs he created. And on top of that, you know, Trump's going to lie like a sack of shit because Trump's a sack of shit. He going to lie. Talk about he had the best economy since uh, the country had ever seen. No, it ain't. The economy's banging and booming right now as the recording of this video. I remember in the 1990s how, the, how uh, in the late 1990s, how the economy was banging. That just shows you how old I am. So Trump's full of shit, just like he always full of shit. Well, look, the greatest economy in the world, he, he's the only one who thinks that, I think. I don't know anybody else who thinks that. <laughs> That's right. The world. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, we found ourselves in a situation where his, his economy, he rewarded the wealthy. He had the largest tax cut in American history, $2 trillion. He raised a deficit larger than any president has in any one term. He's the only president other than Herbert Hoover who's had lost more jobs 
than he had when he began, since Herbert Hoover. The idea that he did something that was significant in the military. Why is Trump shaking you know, his head? Is he, he, he got an earpiece in? He's listening to somebody? Afghanistan, he didn't do anything about that. When he was president, we were still finding ourselves in a position where you had a notion that we were this safe country. The truth is, I'm the only president this century that doesn't have any, this, this decade, that doesn't have any troops dying anywhere in the world like he did. Uh, President Trump, uh, I want to follow up if I can. You Am want I allowed to, to respond to him? Well, I'm going to ask you a follow up. You can do whatever you want with the minute that we give you. Um, I, I want to follow up. You, you want to impose a 10% tariff on all goods coming into the U.S. How will you ensure that that doesn't drive prices even higher? Not going to drive them higher. It's just going to cost countries that have been ripping us off for years, like China and many others, in all fairness to China. It's going to just force them to pay us a lot of money, reduce our deficit tremendously, and give us a lot of power for other things. But he would. That's BS. So this is what China did. Since people wanted to. So, in the, so Donald Trump started what they called a trade war. And so, long story short, China stopped buying goods that America produces in our, in our heartland, like, 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 like uh, produce. And so and they start buying it from other places in uh, like Argentina and, and other places in South America. And their economies boomed with that. I mean, well, I don't say their economies, but they, their economy felt the impact of buying, you know, being able to sell produce. And so anyway, a little story short, the formers, p people who have reformed uh, their forms in their uh, in their in their families since the slavery days. Uh, in the 1850s, they forms went out of out of uh, they they well so Trump had to actually end up, end up sending them subsidies for their form. Some of their forms just went flat bankrupt, and so the money they get with, they were getting from tariffs was the money <laughs> that 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 the forms were going to make. They had to end up subsidizing forms, and that was the money that they were going to make from selling stuff to China anyway. So it, the tariffs really didn't have any effect. If anything, they had a negative effect. So he's he just wanted to do tariffs because, you know, Donald Trump likes to do what Donald Trump want to do. He made a statement. The only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation. I didn't get a tax in cut. History. That's why we had all the Actually, jobs. I did. And the jobs went down, and then they bounced back, and he's taking credit for bounce back jobs. You can't do that. He also said... He inherited 9% inflation. No, he inherited almost no inflation, and it stayed that way for 14 months, and then it blew up under his leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing, and they don't know what they were doing. It was the worst, probably. Oh, yeah, and also the, for, the uh, so the form, the form, uh, so that's why a lot of the, also what I was talking about earlier, a lot of the produce went, a lot of the produce is more expensive now because of those trade wars, because since China wasn't buying the goods, they had a lot of actually, I think the government was actually buying it just to just and not even actually taking the goods. They were just subsidizing the forms, which is buying their stuff without even, you know, asking for the stuff. And so the forms and all of the produce had to go up. So the, the, the all of the costs and inflation had a lot to do with the damn tariffs. But see, he ain't gonna say that. Trump's ain't doing shit but lying. The worst administration in history. There's never been. And as far as Afghanistan is concerned, I was getting out of Afghanistan, but we were getting out with dignity, with strength, with power. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. But your ass didn't. Biden got out of Afghanistan. And so don't, let's not even trip. Now, did, did, was it clean? No. But at one point, it wasn't going to be clean anyway. So it should have, you would have, but you didn't. He got out. It was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country's life. President Trump, over the last eight years, under both of your administrations, the national debt soared to record highs. And according to a new nonpartisan analysis, President Trump, your administration approved $8.4 trillion in new debt. Well, so far, President Biden, you've approved $4.3 trillion in new debt. So, former President Trump, many of the tax cuts that you signed into law are set to expire next year. You want to extend them and go even further, you say. With the U.S. facing trillion-dollar deficits and record debt, 
why should top earners and corporations pay even less in taxes than they do now? Because the tax cut spurred the greatest economy that we've ever seen just prior to COVID. And even after COVID, it was so strong that we were able to get through COVID much better than just about any other country. But we spurred, that tax spurred. Now, when we cut the taxes, as an example, the uh, corporate tax was cut down to 21 percent from 39 percent plus beyond that. Uh, we took in more revenue with much less tax, and companies were bringing back trillions of dollars back into our country. The country was going like never before, and we were ready to start paying down debt. We were ready to start using the liquid gold right under our feet, the oil and gas right under our feet. We were going to have something that nobody else has had. We got hit with COVID. We did a lot to fix it. I gave him an unbelievable situation with all of the therapeutics and all of the things that we came up with. We, we gave him something great. Remember, more people died under his administration even though we had largely fixed it. More people died under his administration than our administration, and we were right in the middle of it. Something which- <laughs> That's a goddamn lie. <laughs> 2000, man, and God rest all y'all souls, man. People were getting wiped out. And I don't want to hear that. Man, Herman Cain got wiped out going to his rally. So don't, don't miss me with it, man. He could miss me with it, because- at, at 2001, by 2001, COVID had hit. There were 100,000 people dying a month, if I'm not mistaken. It was something crazy, man. Uh, no, there was not more people dying under his watch than, than uh, Joe Biden's watch. Oh, this motherfucker sit up here and lie about, he'll lie about the sky being blue. Which a lot of people don't like to talk about, but he had far more people dying in his administration, he did the mandate, which is a disaster, mandating it. The vaccine went out. He did a mandate on the vaccine, which is the thing that people most objected to about the vaccine. And he did a very poor job, just a very poor job. And I will tell you, not only poor there, but throughout the entire world, we're no longer respected as a country. They don't respect our leadership. They don't respect the United States anymore. We're like a third world nation between weaponization of his election, trying to go after his political opponent. All of the things he's done, we've become like a third world nation. And it's a shame. The damage he's done to our country, and I'd love to ask him and Will why he allowed millions of people to come in here from prisons, jails, and mental institutions to come into our country and destroy our country. President Trump, we will get to immigration uh, later in this block. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. He had the largest national debt of any president in a four-year period, number one. Number two, he, that $2 trillion tax cut benefited the very wealthy. Then I, what I'm going to do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a 1,000 trillionaires in America, I mean billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they, in fact, pay 8.2 percent in taxes. If they just paid 24 percent, 25 percent, either one of those numbers, they'd raise $500 million, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if, if <laughs> God damn, Joe. <laughs> He starts spitting out on it. He lost in his thought. It's a wrap. Come on, Joe. Let's bring it back. Joe, you been hitting that shit lack too much, man. Me and Joe be getting drunk. Me and Joe be getting drunk. And we can't remember Jack no more. <laughs> look. <laughs> hey, look at Donald Trump. Like, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Finally, beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump. <laughs> well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare because all of these people are coming in. <laughs> They're putting them on. Who it, They're man. putting them on Hold Social up, Security. Fuck They're going to destroy Social Security. They've raised five hundred million dollars, billion dollars, I should say, in a ten-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help 
make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if, <laughs> Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump. Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare. All right, man. Because all of these people. Are <laughs> so, making sure everybody can be eligible for all the programs that Donald Trump don't want everybody eligible for. <laughs> Let's give Joe a break. He's older. You know, he's trying to come up with, like, I don't know what the hell Joe is trying to do. But if he sits down, somebody be like, Joe, eligible for Social Security, eligible for, ta ta eligible for, you know, tax breaks, eligible for this, eligible for that. It's probably a bunch of stuff. He was just trying to pick one, and he was just like, oh, man, I forgot my stuff. Damn, Joe, shit, man. That's that COVID vaccine. That COVID vaccine, man, got your brain foggy. Coming in, they're putting them on Medicare. They're putting them on Social Security. They're going to destroy Social Security. This man is going to single-handedly destroy Social Security. These millions Social of Social Security have been destroyed. Millions <laughs> of people coming in, they're trying to put them on Social Security. He will wipe out... Social Security, he will wipe out Medicare. So he was right in the way he finished that sentence. And it's a shame. He What's lied his ass off. In the last four years is not to be believed. Foreign countries, I'm friends with a lot of people. They cannot believe what happened to the United States of America. We're no longer respected. They, they don't like us. We give them everything they want and they, they think we're stupid. They think we're very stupid people. What we're doing for other countries and they do nothing for us. What this man has done is absolutely criminal. Thank you, President Trump. Dana? This is the first presidential election since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This morning, the court ruled on yet another abortion case, temporarily allowing emergency abortions to continue in Idaho, despite that state's restrictive ban. Former President Trump, you take credit for the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, which returned the issue of abortion to the states. Correct. However, the federal government still plays a role in whether or not women have access to abortion pills. They're used in about two-thirds of all abortions. As president, would you block abortion medication? First of all, the Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill, and I agree with their decision to have done that and I will not block it. And if you look at this whole question that you're asking, a complex but not really complex, 51 years ago, you had Roe v. Wade and everybody wanted to get it back to the states, everybody, without exception, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, <laughs> everybody wanted it back, religious leaders. And what I did is I put three great Supreme Court <laughs> Dude, like what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Look, on the court and Donald Trump's gonna make some shit up. That's just how he rolls. <laughs> they happen to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade and moving it back to the states. This is something that everybody wanted. Now, ten years ago or so, they said about <laughs> Look how at many his face. and how many this and getting into other things. But every legal scholar throughout the world. That's why Joe got C now. Joe's like, I can't believe it. He tried to come up with stuff. Look, man, you're getting old. He just need to, you know, he just need to get old geese on him. I can't believe the bullshit this orange motherfucker is saying. You know, he need to get, he need to go old geese on him. The most respected wanted it brought back to the States. I did that. Now the states are working it out. If you look at Ohio, it was a decision that was, it was a, an end result that was a little bit more liberal than you would have thought. Uh, Kansas, I would say the same thing. Uh, Texas is different. Florida is different. But they're all making their own decisions right now. And right now, the states control it. That's the vote of the people.
Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in the exceptions. I am a person that believes. And frankly, I think it's important to believe in the exceptions. Some people, you have to follow your heart. Some people don't believe in that. But I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. I think it's very important. Some people don't. Follow your heart. But you have to get elected also. And because that has to do with other things. You got to get elected. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the former governor of Virginia. That's bullshit. Well, somebody gets, if you take a life of a child after birth, that's called murder, you moron. He was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the baby aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. That's well, murder. We brought it back to the states, and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great thing. Thank you. President Biden? It's been a terrible thing, what you've done. The fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars supported Roe when it was decided. Supported Roe. And that was that's, this idea that they were all against it is just ridiculous. And he should know, because he was there. And this is the guy who says the state should be able to have it. We're in a state where in six weeks... You don't even know whether you're pregnant or not, but you cannot see a doctor have your, and have him decide on what your circumstances are, whether you need help. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states, let each state have a different rule. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he, he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in to, they talk about that, but here's the deal: there's a lot of young women who are being raped by their by their in-laws, by their by, by their spouses, brothers and sisters, by oh, just it's, it's just ridiculous, and they can do nothing about it. And they try to arrest them when they cross state lines. Thank you. There have been Damn. many young women. <laughs> Goddamn, Joe. Joe, we said they're stuttered, man. Joe tried to get it. He tried to get. Well, I mean, I can, I can kind of understand where Joe coming from. Because when he so, sit up here and say a whole bunch of lies, he just got to be a little sharper and get to the point. Because he, he just got so much material. Because, you know, when you're trying to rebut somebody who's lying, you be like, you don't shut your ass up. Ain't nobody doing that. Ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying? You sit over there. Ain't no constitutional scholars doing that. You know what I'm saying? Shut your ass up. Everything you say is a lie. You know what I'm saying? He keep. Tell him, God, you know, but he can't do that. Like, you you can't tell the truth. That ain't right. No, 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 no. Everything this motherfucker says is a lie. Next question. And he gonna lie about that one. And then just go on from there. By the same people he allows to come across our border. We have a border that's the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. Consider the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. And he opened it up and these killers are coming into our country. Oh, uh, I've been to that border. Trust me, that's more dangerous places than that border. And they are raping and killing women. And it's a terrible thing. As far as the abortion is concerned, it is now back. They're probably the raping men, living. too. Uh, in many cases, the... Hey, guess who else is raping women? Donald J. Trump. It's, a, frankly, a very liberal decision. In many cases, it's the opposite. But they're voting, and it's bringing it back to the vote of the people, which is what everybody wanted including the founders if they knew about this issue, which, frankly, they didn't. But they would have – everybody wanted brought back. Ronald Reagan wanted it brought back. He wasn't able to get it. Everybody wanted it brought back, and many presidents had tried to get it back. I was the one to do it. And, again, this gives it the vote of the people, and that's where they wanted it. Every legal scholar wanted it that way. Staying on the topic of abortion, President Biden, seven states – I'll let you do that. Uh, this is the same topic. Seven states have no legal <laughs> look at look on, his face. on how far into a pregnancy a woman can obtain an abortion. Do you support any legal limits on how late a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy? I support Roe v. Wade, which had three trimesters. First time is between the woman and the doctor. Second time is between the doctor and an extreme situation. The third time is between the doctor and I mean, be between the, the woman and the state. The idea that the politicians, the, the, that the founders wanted the politicians to be the ones making decisions about women's health is ridiculous. 
And so last, no politician should be making that decision. A doctor should be making those decisions. That's how it should be run. That's what you're going to do. And if I'm elected, I'm going to restore Roe v. Wade. So that means he can take the life of the baby in the ninth month and even after birth, because some states, Democrat run, take it after birth. I no, moron, he didn't say that. He said the third trimester. After birth is not the third trimester. You silly motherfucker. Again, the governor, former governor of Virginia, put the baby down, then we decide what to do with it. So he's, in, he's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. Nobody wants that to happen, Democrat or Republican. Nobody wants it to happen. That is simply not true. The Roe v. Wade does not provide for that. That's not the circumstance. Only a woman's life is in danger. She's going to die. That's the only circumstance in which that can happen. But we are not for late-term abortion, period, period, period. Under Roe v. Wade, you have late-term abortion. You can do whatever you want, depending on the state. You can do whatever you want. We don't think that's a good thing. We think it's a radical thing. We think the Democrats are the radicals, not the Republicans. For 51 years, that was the law. 51 years, constitutional scholarship said it was the right way to go. 51 years, and it was taken away because this guy put very conservative members on the Supreme Court. He takes credit for taking it away. What's he going to do? What's he going to do, in fact, if the, if the MAGA Republicans, he gets elected, and the MAGA Republicans control the Congress, and they pass a universal ban on abortion, period, across the board? at six weeks or seven or eight or ten weeks, something very, very conservative. Is he going to sign that bill? I'll veto it. He'll sign it. Thank you. Let's turn now to the issue of immigration and border security. President Biden, a record number of migrants have... <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck up, Donald Trump. Anyway, do I need to play the rest of this? Biden was stuttering that Trump was lying. We have the two worst presidential candidates in the history of presidential candidates. And, I mean, we've had some horrible ones. But Donald Trump and Joe Biden, goodness, Lord. I don't know. I know who I'm voting for. I vote for Joe Biden. Because I know Donald Trump ain't shit. And I ain't just, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to, I'll just keep it a buck, man. You got to be somebody who's not going to lie and have some type of integrity. If you a liar and you ain't shit and you rape women, you a convicted felon, I'm not voting for you, man. I ain't never going to vote for you. If you said that the Central Park Five should have got the death penalty probably anyway because they probably did something to get the death penalty, I'm not voting for you, man. You ain't shit. Anyway, PA Texas, and I'm out.